In this video, we're going to give another alternative proof that the dimension of the row space of a matrix is equal to the dimension of its column space. This proof will be shorter than the previous proof, but we will make use of the following lemma that we discussed when we proved the dimension theorem. And that lemma says the following, let S be a subspace of Rn. If S is contained in the span of k many vectors v1 through vk, then the dimension of s is at most k. So we're going to use this lemma to help us prove that row rank is equal to column rank. This proof is going to exploit a connection between the rank of a matrix and the idea of a matrix factorization. To factor an integer a is to write it as a product of other integers, as a is equal to x times y. So a matrix factorization is very similar. A factorization of a matrix a is simply to write a as a product of two other matrices. Let's look at the sizes of the matrices involved in a matrix factorization. If a is a m by n matrix, and a is equal to x times y, then we know that x must have m many rows and y must have n many columns. We don't necessarily know in advance what, this, what the value of d is, the number of columns of x and the number of rows in y. We know that the number of columns in x has to be equal to the number of columns in, in y, number of rows in, in y. But we can have different factorizations of the matrix A with different values of this parameter D. Now let's see the connection between matrix factorizations and the dimension of the row space. To do this, we think about the product of X and Y in terms of the row picture of matrix multiplication. So what does the row picture of matrix multiplication say? It says that every row of A is a linear combination of the rows of Y. Well, why is that? Well, the row picture of matrix multiplication says that, say, the first row of A here is equal to the first row of X times the matrix Y. And this vector, row vector, times this matrix is nothing other than a linear combination of the rows of the matrix Y, where the coefficients in this linear combination are given by the entries in the first row of X. Okay, so that shows that every row of A is a linear combination of the rows of y. Another way to put this is that the row space of A is contained in the span of the rows of y. So y1 through yd here are the d many rows of y. Well, why is that? Well, if every row of A can be written as a linear combination of the rows of Y, that means that every row of A is in this, in, in this span here. And the row space is the span of all of the rows of A, then certainly also the row space will be contained in the span of the rows of Y. So now if we apply the lemma from the first slide, this means that the dimension of the row space is at most d. So here we see the first connection between rank and matrix factorizations. Now we can relate matrix factorizations to the dimension of the column space by looking at the column picture of matrix multiplication. So what does the column picture of matrix multiplication tell us? It tells us that every column of A is a linear combination of the columns of x. Why is that? Well, for example, the column picture of matrix multiplication tells us that the first column of the matrix A 
is equal to the matrix X times the first column of the matrix Y. And now what is this matrix vector product here? That's none other than a linear combination of the columns of the matrix X where the coefficients in the linear combination are given by the coefficients in this uh, vector here, the first column of Y. So that tells us that the column space of A is contained in the span of the columns of X. So here X1 through XD are the D many columns of the matrix X. Again applying the lemma from the first slide, we see that the dimension of the column space is at most D because the column space is contained in the span of these D many vectors. Now we can show that the column rank of a matrix is at most its row rank. How can we do that? Well, suppose that the dimension of the row space is R, so the row rank is equal to R. We're going to see that this implies that we can write A as a product of matrices X times Y, where X has R many columns and Y has R many rows. Now from the previous slide, if we can write A as a product of X times Y, where X has R many columns, that means that the dimension of the column space is at most R, and therefore will show that the column rank is at most the row rank. So now let's see why this statement is true. If the dimension of the row space is R, then we can find a basis for the row space with R many vectors. Call them capital Y1 through capital YR. Since this is the basis for the row space, we can express each row of A, A1 through AM, as a linear combination of these basis vectors. So that's what I've done here. I've expressed the first row of A as a linear combination of the basis vectors, the second row of A, etc., all the way through the nth row of A. Now it just remains to write all of these linear equations as one big matrix equation. And how can we do that? Well, we can just let Y be the matrix whose rows are these basis vectors y1 through yr and let x be the matrix of coefficients in these linear combinations here. And then again thinking about the row picture of matrix multiplication we see that these equations exactly mean that a is equal to x times y. So this shows that the column rank of a matrix is at most its row rank. The proof that the row rank of a matrix is at most its column rank is very similar. We've already seen that if we can write A as a product of matrices X and Y, where X has R many columns and Y has R many rows, that means that the dimension of the row space is at most R. Therefore, it suffices for us to show that we can find such a factorization when the dimension of the column space is R. To do this, we proceed exactly as in the previous slide. If the dimension of the column space is R, that means that we can find a basis for the column space with R many vectors. Let's call them capital X1 through capital XR. Now let A1 through AN denote the columns of the matrix A. The fact that X1 through XR is a basis for the column space of A means that we can express each of the A1 through AN as a linear combination of the X1 through XR. So we write out all these n many equations expressing each column of A as a linear combination of the X1 through XR. Again, we can formulate all of these linear equations as one big matrix equation. So now, if we let x be the matrix whose columns are the basis vectors x1 through xr, and we let y be the matrix of coefficients here, then thinking about the column picture of matrix multiplication, 
we see that these equations mean that a is equal to x times y. So that proves this statement here, and that finishes the proof that the row rank is equal to the column rank. Before we finish, let's just make one more observation about the connection between matrix rank and factorizations. What this proof has actually shown is that we can equivalently express the rank of a matrix in terms of matrix factorizations. Namely, the rank of a, of a m by n matrix is equal to the minimum d such that there is a m by d matrix x and a d by n matrix y such that a is equal to x times y.